A White Heron, written by Sarah Orne Jewett, is a renowned short story that has gained popularity among readers. It exemplifies American regionalism and romanticism, highlighting the significance of the setting, the bond between humans and animals, the celebration of nature, and personal experiences. Jewett, a prominent figure in literary regionalism, frequently delves into themes revolving around the natural world. In A White Heron, Jewett skillfully employs literary techniques like personification to bring the environment and animals to life as secondary characters. Originally published in 1886, the story revolves around Sylvia, a nine-year-old girl residing with her grandmother in the coastal woods of Maine. Her transformative journey unfolds as she grapples with the decision of revealing the rare white heron's location to an ornithologist. Sylvia defies expectations by resisting greed and the desires of an older male character, instead prioritizing the preservation of nature's purity and her own happiness. The story commences with a vivid depiction of the setting, an expansive forest in Maine, illuminated by the lingering glow of a bright sunset amidst the tree trunks. Sylvia's task is to bring her cow, Mistress Moley, back to her grandmother's farm for milking. Mistress Moley, known for her adventurous nature, often strays far from her pasture. Despite Sylvia's prolonged search for the cow, which leaves her feeling impatient, she discovers Mistress Moley near the swamp and bursts into laughter. Affectionately, she guides the animal homeward using a twig adorned with birch leaves. Sylvia contemplates how her grandmother, Mrs. Tilly, will respond to their late arrival. Mrs. Tilly suspects that Sylvia often gets distracted by her love for the outdoors, causing her to linger while performing her chores. As Sylvia and her trusted companion proceed along the trail, they pause at a brook, where Mistress Moley quenches her thirst. Sylvia takes a moment to cool her bare feet in the water, savoring the sights and sounds of moths, birds, and other creatures that surround them in the enchanting forest. Sylvia's mind drifts back to the bustling city where she once resided with her numerous siblings, a place she left behind a year ago to settle on the farm. Mrs. Tilly, her grandmother, took Sylvia under her wing with the intention of having additional assistance on the farm. Recognizing Sylvia's timidity and fear of people, Mrs. Tilly understood that the city was not the right environment for her. While Sylvia occasionally ponders the events unfolding in her old, noisy town, her heart belongs to the tranquil woods where she finds solace and contentment in the embrace of nature. Abruptly, Sylvia's thoughts are interrupted by the sound of a boy's whistle, nearby and distinct from the friendly melodies of birds. This particular whistle carries a determined and somewhat aggressive tone. Seeking refuge, Sylvia conceals herself amidst the bushes, but her hiding spot is discovered by the boy. Curious, he inquires about the distance to the main road. Trembling, Sylvia responds in a hushed voice, stating that it is a considerable distance away. The young man, with a gun slung over his shoulder, reassures Sylvia, urging her not to be afraid. He reveals his purpose of bird hunting, but admits to losing his way. Seeking shelter for the night, he asks Sylvia if he can stay at her house until morning. Though hesitant, Sylvia reluctantly agrees. Together with the hunter and Mistress Moley, Sylvia makes her way back to the farm, where her grandmother awaits at the doorway. Mrs. Tilly playfully remarks on the cow's mischievous antics and inquires about the stranger. Unable to find the right words, Sylvia's silence is broken by the hunter, who shares his wayfarer's story and requests a night's lodging. Mrs. Tilly graciously accepts the request, and the characters spend the evening engaged in milking the cow, enjoying dinner, and conversing while gazing at the rising moon. As the night progresses, these newfound companions delve into discussions about Mrs. Tilly's family history, including the sorrowful loss of four children, while finding solace in the presence of Sylvia's mother and her son Dan, who resides in California. Dan, known for his skills in hunting partridges and squirrels, often provided Mrs. Tilly with game to cook. Mrs. Tilly remarks on Sylvia's resemblance to Dan, emphasizing how Sylvia possesses an intimate knowledge of every inch of the surrounding woods, thereby earning the trust and acceptance of the wild creatures that consider her one of their own. The hunter is enthralled by Sylvia's profound familiarity with the woods and its inhabitants. He reveals his lifelong passion for bird collecting, which started in his early years, and his pursuit of rare birds for the past five years. As the conversation unfolds, Mrs. Tilly inquires if the ornithologist cages the birds, 
to which he responds that they are stuffed and preserved in his collection, each one shot or snared by his own hand. He reveals that he had recently spotted a white heron a few miles away from the farm and had followed its trail until he lost his way. Describing the peculiar appearance of the bird with its tall stature, soft feathers, and thin legs, the ornithologist looks to Sylvia with hope, silently urging her to disclose her knowledge of the bird. Although Sylvia remains silent, the narrator reveals that she does indeed recognize the white heron. While the hunter continues to speak, Sylvia remains quiet, her mind absorbed in her own thoughts. The hunter confesses his desire to locate the heron, expressing his intention to spend his vacation in search of it. To entice anyone who can lead him to the heron, he offers a generous reward of $10, a substantial sum for the impoverished farmers in the area. Mrs. Tilly is thrilled by the prospect of the monetary reward, but Sylvia's attention is captivated by a toad leaping toward its burrow nearby. The following day, Sylvia accompanies the ornithologist into the woods. Her initial fear of the young man has dissipated, and she now perceives him as kind-hearted and understanding. The hunter shares his knowledge of birds and presents Sylvia with a jackknife as a gift, which she treasures dearly. Although he startles her when he shoots a bird, and she entertains the notion of liking him better without his gun, Sylvia continues to regard him with deep admiration, finding him charming and delightful. At the tender age of nine, she experiences a vague thrill at the notion of love's enchantment. The next morning, Sylvia ascends a towering pine tree in an attempt to gain an aerial perspective of the forest and locate the white heron's nest. Stealthily leaving the house, she hastens through the familiar woods she knows so well. When she discovers the gigantic tree asleep, she summons her courage and begins to ascend the adjacent white oak, climbing higher and higher, tightly gripping the branches. Eventually, she faces the perilous leap from the white oak to the colossal pine tree. As Sylvia ascends the aged pine tree, it takes on a persona of its own, seemingly cherishing its newfound dependent. The tree, with its protective nature, wards off the winds to ensure Sylvia maintains her balance. Finally reaching the pinnacle of the tree, Sylvia gazes upon the breathtaking sight before her, the magnificent sea, two hawks soaring through the sky, woodlands, farms, churches, verdant flora, and lush marshes. Weary from her climb, but filled with elation, she carefully scans the landscape, seeking the white heron's abode. However, it eludes her notice until the tree itself speaks, urging her to look down again, Sylvia, directing her gaze to the spot where the marsh meets the birches and hemlocks, where she had once glimpsed the heron. In a graceful flight, the white heron materializes, alighting upon a nearby tree branch. The heron calls out to its mate nested in the marsh, and Sylvia sighs with a sense of contentment as the bird glides back to its home below. Descending from the pine tree, Sylvia ponders how the hunter will react when she divulges the heron's whereabouts. Back at the farm, both Mrs. Tilly and the hunter anxiously search for Sylvia, who had been absent from her bed. As the first light of dawn illuminates the landscape, Sylvia races toward the house, her dress bearing smudges of pine pitch. The hunter suspects that she had been aware of the heron's location all along. Mrs. Tilly and the hunter interrogate Sylvia, but she has a change of heart and chooses not to disclose the heron's dwelling. Mrs. Tilly scolds her, for they could have gained wealth from the hunter's promised reward of $10. Remaining silent, Sylvia refuses to betray the heron's sanctuary. Disheartened by his failure to locate the bird, the young man eventually departs. Sylvia, having prioritized the well-being of the heron over the ornithologist's desires and her own budding connection with him, retreats back into the woods. The narrator ponders the notion of whether the birds might have been better companions than the hunter could ever have been, such mysteries remain untold. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.